They say that love is blind, but man, do they not sell that statement enough. Okay, one, two, three, uh -huh. Yes. Because all over the world, there are people who will claim that they've found the one, even though it's someone who's either very atypical, very different in regards to their age gap, or just someone you never, ever think would match up in person. <laughs> Love is blind, and sometimes people are just dumb. So from a short bodybuilder marrying his trans friend to the youngest groom in the world, here are 20 most unusual couples proving that love is blind. Number 20. Anton Kraft and China Bell We'll begin with a couple that's honestly rather poetic when it comes to our current world and the feelings that surround certain groups of people. Anton Kraft is a bodybuilder, and that right there would give you an impression that he's incredibly massive and muscular, and no doubt has absolutely no problems getting the ladies. Well, there's a few catches on both of those parts. While he is a bodybuilder, no doubt, he's also someone who just happens to be four foot four in height. What's more, he apparently has a rule that he will only date women who are at least a foot taller than him. Which is curious, but to each their own, right? And that brings us to his girlfriend, China Bell. A unique name for a unique person because China is transgender. Okay, lift me up. Okay, I'm the count of three. Okay. Ready? One, two, three. Uh -oh. Yes. Obviously, that's significant because the transgender community as well as the LGBTQ plus community as a whole often don't exactly get the love and respect that they deserve from most people, especially with the transgender community as they are seen as unnatural by many and are those who are hurt physically and mentally as a result. But for Anton, he apparently doesn't care as he fell for China and is most happy with her. China herself admits that she was happy that she gave Anton a chance, and the two are now very much in love and do well together. If most people were as accepting as Anton, we might honestly live in a better world. The alternative? Well, like this next couple, they just make it worse. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. Now we're partially moving on here because the question of someone older marrying someone much younger than themselves is not a new trend. In fact, it's a very age-old one that goes back hundreds of years and has been in practice in various royal families, hierarchies, and more. But why? Why do they do this massive age gap? Well, part of it is genetics. The older a woman gets, the less likely they are to bear children, while men can have children well into their old age. So for some civilizations, they did the age gap thing to help ensure a family line. The other option is somewhat more obvious. It comes down to attraction, especially in regards to certain kings, when they would want to marry the most beautiful woman in the land, regardless of her age. When you see it today, though, it can be a little bit odd. What do you think? Let me know all about it in the comments below using the hashtag fancy topic, and I'll continue to shower you with very odd couples. Number 19. Old and Young Now this one may likely gross you out a little bit, so I'll just tell you for now that you've been warned. Sunil Masalela and Helen Shabangu married for the first time in 2013. On the surface, that doesn't sound bad. That is, until you look at the details of the situation. Aged just eight years old, Sunil was the world's youngest groom, and he married the bride who was 53 years his senior, claiming that the order to wed would come from their dead ancestors. Now that sounds a little bit crazy, but trust me when I say that this is about to get much more strange. In an interview with BuzzFeed, Sunil's mother, Patience, explained that the couple's marriage is only symbolic and the pair do not actually live together or engage in any kind of activities. 
Thank God for that. Because technically that would be a crime and then we'd have a whole other section of things to talk about. Sunil noted that once he was old enough he would be able to marry someone his own age and yet the two actually went and renewed their vows just years later. Now allow me to be blunt but what in the actual hell is going on here? Sure, we all do things in the name of family, no one's denying that this is a bad motivation for things, but when it comes to marriage, the last people that you want to go and listen to are your dead ancestors. Seriously, they're the last people to listen to because they're dead. Notice that I haven't made fun of them for both somehow hearing the dead, because that's the least dumb part of it all. No one talked them out of it. Nobody really seemed to care that this symbolic marriage occurred and that they did renew their vows. In short, they're nuts and we're moving on. Number 18. Yolison Fernandez da Silva now, that is some kind of name. But what's somewhat ironic here is that Yolison Fernandez da Silva isn't just a large name, but he's also a large man. In fact, he's 7 foot 8 inches tall, making him one of the biggest people in the world. He's from northern Brazil and developed gigantism as a child, living as a recluse until he met his partner, Evim Medeiros, aged 23, on Facebook. Now, to be clear, that's not the odd part, as many people meet online, and they hook up there. But what is odd, per se, is the size difference that's between them. Specifically, she's three feet shorter than he is, and that is quite a photograph if you think about it. His condition was caused by a tumor when he was young, and he had to have surgery in order to get rid of it just so he could stop growing. While it did work, it didn't work quick enough, as he grew to be 7 foot 8, and that's not an easy height to live with. Which he and his wife found out the hard way as they tried to have a child, and it wasn't easy for them. To the point where they honestly wondered if he was infertile due to his condition. Still though, they're very much in love despite their size difference, and that's what's really important now, isn't it? Number 17. Kyle Jones and Marjorie McCool now, I'm going to be very clear with you here on this one. This one very much grosses us out. Because when Kyle Jones and Marjorie McCool got together, there were multiple things that were very wrong with the situation. The first of which was the fact that there was a 60 year age gap between the two. That's a lot. But wait, there's more. And it gets worse. Kyle Jones? Well, he's actually Marjorie McCool's grandson. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, he was a young, a young woman back then. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, the two are in a relationship despite not just their age, but their actual family connection, which means that this is indeed a kind of incest in its own form. Just as bad and even more gross is that the two have happily and openly admitted that they have a very physical relationship. Ew. And if you don't believe that, just look it up. I'm not going to go into any more details on this because they do get very explicit in their interviews and I want to vomit into my shoes just thinking about it. Come and comfort me, Twinkle. I need your guinea pig cuddles right now. If alarm bells are ringing, and I hope they have been the whole time, you should know that Marjorie has no fame or riches to her name, and so it's not some kind of gold digging situation, though it does seem to be a kind of honest relationship between two people that apparently like each other. Is it still gross to high heaven? You bet your shorts it is. And we can only hope that other relationships like this don't happen. Love may be blind, but this is just sad. Number 16. Anastasia Rescos and Quentin Dehar. Now, the last couple that I showed you was on what you might call borderline insanity, but this next one, well, they're freaking nuts in the worst way, and it's a perfect example of why transforming yourself into your ideal image can have disastrous results. Anastasia Reskos and Quentin Dehar are a Russian couple that have a couple of things in common that honestly define their relationship, 
The biggest one by far is that they both have a love for the Barbie and Ken line of dolls. And by that, I mean that they collect them and actually try to be them. If it were to stop there, it wouldn't be all that insane. However, the two have literally gotten surgeries in order to try to make themselves look like Barbie and Ken. That's right, they're spending mounds upon mounds of rubles in order to make themselves look like Ken and Barbie. Or at the very least, to mimic the dolls that they love so much. That's not just insane, it's actually kind of sad and concerning. Now, we've all no doubt heard certain stories of men and women going to extreme lengths to look pretty and coming off looking fake, but with these two, they don't mind being fake as long as it makes them look like Barbie and Ken. I honestly don't pity them because this is their choice, but their choices are ones that are going to cause ruin to them in one form or another, not the least of which is what happens if Barbie and Ken end up splitting up. Number 15. Gabriella and Victor Peralta Now are you ready for another couple who would technically border on the line of insanity? Meet the world's most modified couple who have up to 90% coverage. Gabriella and Victor Peralta have 77 bodily modifications between them. 50 piercings, 4 microdermals, 11 body implants, 5 dental implants, 4 ear expanders, 2 ear bolts, and 1 forked tongue. The pair are also plastered in tattoos. Victor has over 90% of his body covered and Gabriella has 65%. Now it's true, this couple decided that the best way to show off who they are were to get a bunch of world records in the process and literally cover and alter their body so much that they could get to a level that's worthy of such honors. Now some people would claim that this is a little bit extreme because getting a tattoo, well sure, if you're willing to have it on you forever, it's not for everyone but it does make some people happy so that's good in the end. Piercings? Yeah, perhaps not on certain parts of the body, but they can be a type of expression in and of themselves. But getting a bunch of either in order to mutilate your body just for a few world records? That's perhaps not worth it at all, and I'd bet that both of them are in extreme pain all the time. Number 14. Amelie Jennings' Thin Husband now, if you watch TLC a lot, and sadly a lot of people do these days, despite the content being infinitely cringe, you'll notice that a lot of shows featuring people, mainly women, who are vastly overweight to the point that they have to show titles like My 800 Pound Life, these shows are nothing more than to shock people into seeing what can honestly happen if you're too overweight, and yet TLC grossly glorifies these kinds of things to no end. Am I off topic? Well, the reason I bring it up is because of Amelie Jennings, a girl who has a body size of 30, which is very large for a woman, and yet is married to a man who is, well, a whole heck of a lot more thin than she is. They met online and began a friendship there, which is completely fine, and after they would meet in person they had an instant connection and were soon to be married. But it wasn't easy because of her husband's family, especially her father who was not exactly supportive of the marriage at all, and thus they had to cut him off from them. On one hand, it's good to see that her husband was willing to see beyond her shape and into her other features, but in the end all that matters is that the two are healthy and happy and that they can carry on a great relationship together. Number 13. Richard Gere and Alejandra Silva Oh, you thought that it was only the common man and some very not common people who would get into relationships that are a bit odd and atypical, right? Well, wrong, because whether you want to acknowledge it or not, the celebrity world is honestly rather infamous for things like this, because there are all sorts of couples that have dated and even been married to people that are way younger than them. Which brings us to Richard Gere and Alejandra Silva. At present, Gere, longtime Hollywood stud and actor, is 72 years old, and his wife Alejandra, well, she's a family friend that eventually married him and she's currently only 38. 
That's right, he's married to a woman that's almost literally half his age. Talking about taking things into high gear, <laughs> get it? I thought you would. Well, this is a woman who really deeply cares about people. Is it a weird thing? Oh yeah, it is, but sadly no one really seems to care because it's Richard Gere. And clearly he's happy, and she's happy, and they've had a pair of children together, so shouldn't that be all that matters? Well, that's one way of looking at it, but you just have to wonder what's going to happen if Gere were to tragically pass on soon and thus not be able to see the lives of his children grow by any good measure. And then you have to ask, is it all really worth it? Number 12. Ben Brown and Jenna Bentley Meet Jenna Bentley and boyfriend Ben Brown, who is a wealthy businessman that's at least 30 years older than Jenna. Jenna is a supermodel who made headlines when pictures of her with the new boyfriend would go viral on the internet. People were skeptic of her decision of why a supermodel as hot and beautiful as Jenna Bentley would like to be in a relationship with a man like Ben Brown who as you can see is not anywhere near her on the hotness scale. Sure, love is blind, but there's a difference between love is blind and what the heck is this. Seriously, how did it happen? If this was a television show plot, you know, like something you saw in Lost, you'd expect that she's trying to kill him in order to get something like his fortune or something like that. But at present, that doesn't seem to be the case. What is going on? Nobody knows. And why should we even care? Number 11. Amanda Rogers and Sheba And now for a story that you've likely heard of, and if not, you probably guessed what happened eventually. Because this is a story of a woman who married a dog. Her name is Amanda Rogers, and she decided to marry her dog, Sheba. And yes, this is real life you have not fallen into the twilight zone. Such things are usually known to happen in India where toads were married to people to appease the rain gods, or helpless young girls were married to trees or sundry animals to ward off evil that might affect their future husbands. But here's the thing, she's not from India or even a place that has such practices in the modern day. She's from the UK. And what's more, she was someone who was previously divorced. Oh, with my body, I, pro I promise to take you for daily walkies. So instead of dating someone new and trying to find happiness in that way, she simply went and married a dog. Apparently this was because she was very frustrated with men and thus didn't want to deal with them anymore. I get that from a certain point of view, but that doesn't make you run off and marry a dog, does it? To be clear, there is a bit of a debate as to where this was yet another symbolic marriage, and even Amanda knows that it's not going to hold up if she were to take it to court. But frankly, I don't think she cares, and that says a whole lot. Number 10. Ugliest Man in Uganda Godfrey Baguma has a very interesting title in his home nation of Uganda. In this specific case, he's literally been named the ugliest man in his nation. Yet despite it all, not only does he have three wives, he also apparently has seven children, showing that beauty really is skin deep and that sometimes love finds a way to work itself through everything even when it doesn't seem to be a perfect fit. <laughs> The fact that he has multiple wives should be an indication that he's not entirely without game. Furthermore, his quote-unquote ugly condition is actually a medical one and not just people picking on him. Further showing that love can be blind to the conditions and issues that we sometimes suffer and that happiness can be produced when we look past what is and look at what can be. Does that sound enough like a Hallmark card for you? Well, good. Number 9. Susan and Philip Ealing Philip Ealing was born in Australia 30 years ago with muscular dystrophy, a disease that causes progressive weakness and loss of muscle mass. So from the age of five, he's had to use a wheelchair. Now fast forward to the year 2012 when Philip published his first book, Life is What You Make It. On page 74 is a quote by him predicting that someone would love him wholeheartedly one day and he would be right on that. And eventually it would be a girl from Kenya who goes by the name of Susan Yogu, who moved to Australia and entered the workplace of Philip, and that resulted in what was apparently love at first sight. The two went out for coffee, which included his 
mother being there, ironically enough, and things only escalated from there. That was the beginning of their whirlwind romance, which resulted in an engagement exactly six months later. Clearly, this was a match that was made in heaven, and they seemed to be very happy with one another, so who's to deny them that kind of happiness? Number 8. Flavio Briatore and Elisabetta Gregoracci Flavio Briatore was born and raised in Italy. He went to work in the insurance and restaurant industry and eventually became a very rich businessman, a true success story if there ever was one. However, when it comes to his wife, Elisabetta, you can tell pretty much instantly that something's kind of weird about the picture, mainly in that someone like her isn't likely to end up with someone like him. And you'd be right, because while she was a television star in Italy in her own right, it came at the cost of some very strong rumors about what she would do in order to get that success on television, if you catch my drift. In short, she would give out favors in order for spots on TV, and so when she married Flavio, just about everyone went and agreed that she was doing it not for love, but for the money that he had. However, it didn't stop the two from getting married, and no doubt the rumors have caught his ears many a time or two. Number 7 sister's cousin husband. Now, I'll give you just a little bit of time to guess what's going on with that title. How are you, Twinkle? Are you doing okay? I love you. Yeah. So far on this list, we've shown you very odd, atypical, and downright insane marriages, but all of them can honestly be classified as one thing, monogamous. However, in the case of Vicky and Valerie Darger, they were two who decided that they were so in tune with each other that they would also share a husband. These two twin sisters decided to go and have a polygamous marriage via their shared husband, Joe. Oh, but wait, it gets even more weird, because within this little group is a third woman named Alina. And Alina? Well, she's the Darger sister's cousin. That's right, this really is a family affair in the worst and weirdest kind of sense. We have a rotating night basis, you know, one night with me, one night with Vicky, one night with Valerie, and it starts over again. And you again have to ask what's going on and how this would even come to happen. I'd love to try and understand it myself, but in truth, I'd rather just move on to the next one. Number six. Nick Vujicic and Kanai Miyahara A world-renowned speaker, New York Times best-selling author, coach and entrepreneur, Australian-American-born Nick Vujicic has taken the world by storm and inspired and motivated countless individuals. But why is he such an inspiration? Well, that would be because of the fact that he was born with no arms and no legs. Well, medically speaking, uh, there's a even smaller chance. Which usually would be enough to make it so that someone would need to be taken care of for the rest of their life and wouldn't be able to do much at all. However, instead, he made the most out of it. It's said that Nick would often think that he would never have a wife. That was until he set his eyes on Kanai Miyahara. They met during one of his talks in Texas where she was brought there by her sister. Apparently, once he laid eyes on her, he couldn't look away and the relationship Relationship was soon started afterwards. After their initial meet and greet encounter, Nick would ask her to stay nearby so that he could get to know her better. They would eventually become married in 2012 and would go on to have four children together. So he went from someone who couldn't have anything to a man who basically has it all. Number 5. Udoxi Yao and Grand P. Now this one's a bit unique compared to all the others, I'll admit that, because when it comes to the lady from the Ivory Coast in Udaxi Yao, you can see very easily there's something special about her. Mainly, her hips literally don't lie in regards to how big they are. According to her, this was something very natural that happened to her, not entirely out of the realm of possibility, given the way that the body can grow at times. <laughs> and that she has no qualms about what she actually looks like. 
But when she started dating a rich man named Grand P from New Guinea, many people thought that it was actually fake love and such for obvious reasons. However, the two had known one another for a while, and as a result, they became quite in love. Who is anyone to judge what these two find attractive anyways? Number 4. Vince and Leslie now, I've already shown you a few stories that could be defined as gold digger status, depending on how you look at it, but in the case of Vince and Leslie, they more than likely are that story, but the latter refuses to acknowledge it and only calls it annoying. So why does anyone think that this one's absolutely one of those gold digger stories? Well, because he was 74 years old and she was 34 years old when they got married. That's only the beginning. She was also a beauty pageant winner, and furthermore, he was a very wealthy man, one that already had a family which included children who were older than his new wife. Yeah, feeling good, or are you sick? Yeah, just a little tired. I, I don't know that I slept real well. So yeah, when you add all of those factors together, you could easily see why so many would believe that she's just after him for the money, because typically wealth goes to the spouse, depending on the will. How does that song go? Oh yeah. Why do fools fall in love? Number 3. Brazilian Height Difference Another thing that I've already shown you is that a height difference isn't enough to make a couple separate or even not be in love. And in Brazil, a man at the height of 6 foot 9 and a woman at the height of 5 foot 4 would get married. It's normal. It's normal in casa. The problem, though, at first was the ability to have a baby for them was difficult. The wife noted that she lost multiple children in childbirth, including a pair of twins, but they were able to push through and eventually had a son named Angelo. The husband may be a giant amongst most men, but he doesn't think about that when he's with his wife, again showing that height is just a number and it's all about finding someone that you can be happy with. Number 2 world's shortest couple. Paolo Gabriel da Silva Barros and Katyusha Lai Hoshino, both of Brazil, have been verified at a combined height of just 181.41 centimeters. For those of you who use otherwise, it's 71.42 inches, and they became world record holders of the world's shortest couple after tying the knot. <laughs> Paolo, who was 31 at the time, and Katyusha, who was 28 at the time, first met in 2006 through the now-defunct social media platform Orkut. He admits that the moment he saw her, he thought that she was beautiful, and their relationship only took off from there. There are many in the dating world who actually fear being short because they believe it may lower their prospects, but these two didn't have a problem being with one another despite their height difference and that should be an inspiration to all. Number 1. Bree and Sheldon And finally, a heartwarming story to end on. Bree is confined to a wheelchair, and though she is quite lovely in the eyes of many, including becoming a model, she was very conscious about talking to people online about her condition, even hiding it at times, especially when she did online dating. This would lead to another problem in that her dating profile wouldn't show her in the wheelchair. Can't move really from here down, can't feel from knees down. And, and thus men would judge her upon meeting her. That all changed though when she met Sheldon. Brie and Sheldon connected over their love of style and fashion, and since the pandemic hit, they've gotten even closer, moving in together and working as a model-slash-photographer team on some of Brie's street-style modeling assignments. So while things started off rocky on her part because she didn't know how much to show off, it ended up with her being with a person who doesn't see her wheelchair, but only sees her for who she is. And that's all from the realm of very unusual couples that show that love is blind. Which of them did you think were honestly fine in terms of getting together? Which ones do you look at and go, wow, there's something very wrong with those people? And do you know another couple that would fit well on this list? Let me know all about it in the comments below. Also, be sure to check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.